Why would anybody now go into political life? Why did you, a successful businessman, private equity, made a few bob, went to Harvard, why did you want to get involved in politics? You know, I, I sort of explain to people it's, it's almost like a religious calling. You just can't... You get this uh, uh, compulsion to do something. And uh, probably since I was... I hate to say this, probably since I was about 15, I'm sounding like William Hague now. Um, uh, <laughs> How many pints did you drink as many as him? <laughs> I'm a teetotaler. Uh, uh, but, um, but, no, I, I think you just... I, you know, I'm not really sure where it comes from, but my mum certainly couldn't answer. My mum's solution was, why do you want to become a, a politician, Brooks? Just earn money and give it away if you want to help people. And I think there's some of us, and probably the three of us, saying, I'm going to say probably most of the 650 MPs who are in Parliament, of all parties... I think genuinely want to go in because they want to help, they want to do something, they want to serve their, their communities. And, you know, my view was, you know, I wanted to earn my money first so I didn't uh, feel the pressure to have outside interests or anything when I was in Parliament, um, so I could sort of focus on the work that I wanted to, to do when I was in there. Now, you sort of uh, left Parliament in a, a difficult situation, you know, a moment of madness left under a a bit of a cloud and all the rest of it. I just wondered how easy or difficult is it to rebuild your life and rebuild your reputation and everything once you, once you leave Parliament? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that, that's a good question. I mean, I... I um, uh, you know, it was hard. I, I think for me it was very hard because I had to... Um, I think the first thing, you have to rebuild yourself. I think if, if, if you have uh, problems, if you have issues, which I certainly did, and going back a long time, this was not short term, this is... The, you know, the way I grew up, which wasn't a, a particularly happy childhood. Um, you, you know, this stuff builds up inside of you and you can only mask it for so long. So, actually, it, it, you know, whether I blew up when I blew up then or later on, something would have happened, in my view. So I, I did need to take time out and I did need to rebuild my internal life because you can't, in my view, have a, a good relationship with anybody unless you feel good in yourself. And um, I certainly didn't feel good in my internal life. So, so uh, having the you space think the and the pressures of being, you know, an MP add to that not feeling good with yourself. There you are. I don't know, whipped to do things under the spotlight. Maybe not feeling you were doing what you were, were meant to do in Parliament. Do you think that added to pressures? I, you know, it does. But it's a, uh, you know, you're hardwired from a, from from childhood. And you know, I grew up. I particularly grew up with a very tough mum who had always said to me. You know, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. So, so even no matter what I achieved, whether the, the loads of money I made, which yeah. you mentioned earlier, whether uh, I, I, whatever I achieved in politics, if you're hardwired that way, your internal life says you're still not good enough. And eventually something snaps inside of you and you just basically, in my case, blew myself up. And... Um, and the consequences of that, of course, is that you hurt the people closest to you. And it took me a long time to, to do that, to rebuild my relationship with my family, but I had to rebuild my relationship with myself. So, um, you know, I did that, and, you know, I, I, I think I now have a much better relationship uh, with my family. I think Lucy and I have now been together for 40 years. Uh, it's a long time. Uh, she's saintly for uh, sticking with me for, for that long. But, um, but I think it, it's, it's good. And, and I think, um, uh, you know, it's, it was important for me to rebuild myself. But I'm, I was Sorry. going to go back to what your mum said, in a way, and yeah. I think she probably had something right. She said, you've made a fortune in sort of uh, private equity. Why don't you just make money and then yeah. help people help do charitable things yeah. and in a way you did that whilst you're an MP but you're doing it much more now and I yeah. want to talk about some of these key things that you've done. Sure. So I'll start with Rwanda because this is what yeah. you're doing. So you built a school in Rwanda, you've also got a teaching training centre in Rwanda now and you've also got a house in Rwanda now. There's a lot in the news about Rwanda now where yeah. maybe refugees or where yeah. you know immigrants, illegal immigrants could be going. So Rwanda are we doing the right thing there, sending, you know, immigrants to there? What do you think of Rwanda? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's sort of fascinating to watch the sort of two-dimensional analysis of what Rwanda is and what Rwanda is about. I've been, you know, I started going there in 2007. Um, as I said, I, I, I built a primary school there for 300 kids, a teacher training centre, but the people are amazing. The country is growing like gangbusters. It's a safe country. It's a clean country. It's probably one of the least corrupt countries in Africa. And 
you, you know, so from my standpoint, people going there, forget about whether they're refugees or not. As a place for someone who wants to, to build a new life for themselves, it's a great country, and the people are great people. Now, um, you know, if sending people from uh, uh, UK refugee centres or whatever it is here and sending them to Rwanda, will they want to stay there or not? You know, I can't comment on. But I think once they're there, they're going to be uh, surprised that actually it's quite a good place to rebuild your life. And you've done a huge amount helping Ukrainian refugees mm. as well. 7,600, I think, Ukrainian And two. 7,600. <laughs> I know they all are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, what, what, you know, obviously you've, you've done the stuff in Rwanda, you, you've previously helped people in Syria, you, yeah. you've helped people in... Why was it that you decided you wanted to sort of help refugees and particularly those in Ukraine? What, what, what motivated you to do that? Well, I had a, a very positive, you know, experience working in a Syrian refugee camp 10 years ago now. And, um, you know, when something like this happens, having experienced war firsthand and seeing the impact on refugees, particularly women and children, um, I, when I spotted a friend of mine, I think the third day of the war, who was out there busing people to safety, I sent him... I was in Rwanda doing my field research, because I'm doing a doctorate at the moment on Rwandan education. Um, I felt a compulsion to go out and help him. So uh, I did, and, you know, one thing led to another, and uh, having spent a, an initial week there, I've ended up spending seven weeks there. <laughs> I mean, it's brilliant what, what you're doing. I just wondered, there was a lot of controversy in the UK that we weren't fast enough at providing visas for people wanting to get into the UK. Mm. You were there on the front line seeing all this. What, what was your experience? Was the UK government too slow at helping people trying to get out and into the UK? Yeah, I mean, let me, let me make two, two points. First of all, I think, you know, the Home Office is a very difficult office to run, the Home Office itself. There's a culture there that says, let's not let people in. So I think it took a, a while to adjust. Um, but I do think things are getting a lot better now. I've got a mother and daughter who are staying with my family uh, at the moment. But I want to make a broader a point, which is that, you know, uh, Boris Johnson... Um, you know, is probably the most second popular politician in Ukraine at the moment. He may not be as popular here, <laughs> but over there, and a little bit like Thatcher uh, in Eastern Europe in sort of 89, 90, 91, you know, who is incredibly popular in Eastern Europe, Boris Johnson today is, is almost like a god in, in, in that. But more importantly, the British people, because there are lots of people like myself who are going over there helping the Ukrainians, helping the Ukrainian people in all sorts of ways. You know, British stock is higher than probably every other country put together in the Ukraine. And that's good for our long-term relationship with Ukraine. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.